All right, welcome back to the bench. This is Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Glad you are here. So today we have sort of a combo repair slash teardown video of the Crucial Audio Tone Nugget. This is a two-based booster pedal here. The owner of the pedal initially reached out and offered this as a trade, but told me it needed a repair. Didn't take them up on that, but I said, hey, send it over and I'll have a look at it. It'll be an interesting video for a teardown and hopefully also be able to repair whatever the issue is. Generally speaking, that offer is available to anyone if you have a pedal, especially a pedal that's really off the beaten path, like the uh, Tone Nugget here, and it needs a repair. Shoot me an email at graybenchelect.com. Give me a brief description of what the issue is. I can't promise that I'll take it in because I do have a bunch of projects in the works for different videos. And so I might, fair, fair warning, I might turn it down. But if it's something really interesting and, and unique and I think it would make a good video, then I might take you up on it. So um, yeah, let me know, graybenchelect at gmail.com. So the Tone Nugget here from Crucial Audio. This is, like I said, a vacuum tube booster pedal, as it says here. Crucial Audio, they sell a small range of two based effects pedals. Their most popular one is a delay pedal. The sweetening circuit, I believe they call it, from their, two base delay pedal. They put in a standalone pedal here and they call it the Tone Nugget. As of the filming of this video, this pedal sells for a whopping $560. And it looks like there's about a 10 to 12 week wait time for these. I don't know if that's just because they're difficult to build or because there's a long wait list, hard to say. We're gonna crack it open and see what's going on inside and hopefully repair whatever issue is plaguing the pedal as it stands. Owner of the pedal said that it passed the signal fine and bypass, but as soon as you turn it on, there's just no output. For the externals, we have this uh, rather tall enclosure here. This is this is even bigger than like a 1590 BBS. I'm not sure exactly what the Hammond equivalent part number is. It's a similar enclosure size to that audio kitchen pedal we looked at earlier on the channel. So pretty tall, plenty of room in there for probably a couple PCBs. The documentations for the Tone Nugget here does say that the tube is run at a high voltage. So we're going to expect to see some sort of power supply in there to bump up the incoming uh, nine volts. For tubes, you essentially need two power supplies. You need high voltage for the plates to get good amplification out of them and, and not to be used as just an immediate like, clipping device. And you also need that six or 12 volt power supply for the filaments. Enclosure appears to be a black powder coat, like a matte powder coat. Outside graphics here look like they are silk screened. We have three controls, gain, tone, and level. The tone is marked LPF on the counterclockwise extreme position and HPF, so that's low pass filter, high pass filter. So it's not going to be just a simple like high roll off passive control. You have the ability to affect the entire frequency sweep depending on the position of the knob. You can assume based on this that at the center would be a relatively flat frequency response. Foot switch feels like a standard latching triple pole double throw foot switch. Little five millimeter LED with the Fresnel lens bezel there. On the right side are the in and out jacks. These are the quarter inch Neutrik style jacks with the plastic shoulder washer and the metal nut. There is a pad switch, which is a sort of internally actuated switch. You have to get something in there. Um, so this is probably something that you don't, aren't expected to change regularly. It also doesn't line up with the hole particularly well. And I actually don't know if you're able to actuate it because it doesn't seem like it wants to come far enough out to turn off. We might check the position of the, what I'm assuming are PCBs inside to see if maybe there's just something not right. That, that should be lining up a little better. Left side has has the nine volt DC power input. It does need a higher amperage power supply here, says one amp, but it is still center negative. It says caution, no user serviceable parts inside, refer to qualified technician. I guess that is me. And on the back, we have a barcode and a serial number. So that is it for the externals. Let's go ahead and crack it open. In the words of one of my maker heroes, Adam Savage, there's a problem. This is a Groove Tubes 12AX7, and unfortunately this one is no longer functioning because it has lost its vacuum. You can tell because the upper material here, this is called the getter. The getter material here, which is usually a, a metallic barium, it has turned chalky white, which is a sure sign that there is most likely a crack somewhere in the tube, which let air inside the, the inside the glass here, which has then reacted with that barium and caused it to turn white. It's actually turned into a like an oxide, like barium oxide, I assume. The job of the getter is to react with the little leftover particles after the tube is manufactured 
manufactured and the vacuum is pulled on the tube and it's sealed off, the barium, actually the tube is heated up, which causes the barium to evaporate. It sticks to the glass tube. It leaves like a metallic film. The barium's job is to just react with the little bit of stray particles left inside the tube so that the tube can function to its um, best capacity. So here's the 12AX7 that hasn't lost its vacuum. You can see it still has its silvery barium deposit on the top. Anytime you see a tube like this where it's turned white, it's an immediate replacement. You just swap it out. The barium needs to be there because over the life of the tube, little stray particles from the air will still be left inside the tube, number one, but also a very small amount can leak in through the pin connections where they go inside the glass here. It's not a perfect seal. And so that barium keeps the inside of the uh, tube glass package as air-free as possible. So we'll have to replace that tube. My guess is that's probably why the pedal isn't working. Having a tube that lost its vacuum will definitely cause the pedal not to work. So that's probably that. Let's continue with the teardown and we'll replace this tube and we'll just do a little sound test just to make sure that was the problem. So we have a dual PCB design here and the upper PCB is sort of right angle mounted. You can see little metal brackets here that are screwed in either side. We also have these metal standoffs that were screwed in through the front of the enclosure through the holes here. The pots are alpha pots with the long leg PCB mounting design. The controls for gain is a linear one meg. The tone is a linear 250K and the volume is a linear one meg. Foot switch is a standard blue three pull double throw foot switch. The pad switch here uh, is definitely kind of off kilter. Might be a little hard to see. Yeah, maybe you can see it there. I'm not sure if that's just, um, hopefully it's not something that got damaged. It's it appears to have actually just been soldered kind of crooked. We'll see if in reassembly that sort of reorients itself, but it wasn't wanting to line up with the hole well enough to extend back out this switch. So we'll have to check on that. We have an IC here. Unfortunately, it's been painted over. Generally not a big fan of gooping pedals. It makes it harder to repair. You know, it's hard to tell what these parts are. If there, if this was some issue with the pedal, you would have to make an educated guess. It's probably in the high voltage power supply. It's probably a voltage regulator of some type. We also have a couple resistors here that are also painted over. Presumably these are important to the function of this circuit here. Hard to tell because they're painted over. The resistors are carbon film resistors, quarter watt. We also have some electrolytics here. These appear to be Jamicon brand electrolytics. There is a transistor here. This is a MPS A42 transistor right in there. We also have a couple transistors or at least what look like transistors on the back here. These might be voltage regulators as well. I don't see any markings on this side of the transistor. So maybe it's on the other side or they might've been sanded off, hard to tell. There's a little trim pot here. We're gonna leave that where it is. Trim pot value is a 5K. High voltage, 22 microfarad, 450 volt cap right there. This cap is a Lellen, can't see markings. This looks like a high voltage cap in here. Yeah, 630 volt cap there. And there's our tube socket. You can see it's sort of mounted in the horizontal fashion that gives room for that tube. Got a nice piece of foam under the tube to help dampen uh, any vibrations that might cause microphonics in the tube, but also just to give the tube a nice comfortable seating as the pedals bounced around in a van or whatever. The connection here is interesting. It's using these sort of right angle header connections, but the, the right angle pins appear to be soldered on the other side. We have solder connections here and also solder connections down here at the bottom. There's a piece of foam here under the potentiometers. I'm not quite sure what that's doing. It's not heavy enough foam or dense enough foam to stop the pots from pushing in. So I'm not quite sure what that's doing. Jacks here, quarter inch jacks look like standard plastic quarter inch jacks. These are switching jacks, but they're mono only. That appears to be about it for the tone nugget here. Let's go ahead and pull the bad tube out here and we'll put in a good tube and put it back together. Maybe do a quick voltage check just to see what the plates are running at. And then we'll put it into my little test stand and just make sure that it's all good.
All right, got the pedal put back together here. We got the new tube. It's actually a used tube. I can't even remember where I got this out of, so I'm just gonna send this to the uh, pedal owner for free. I got a whole box of 12 x 7s uh, for which I do not remember where they came. We're gonna check the voltages here, make sure I go have a good continuity for my black lead with the enclosure, I do. So we're gonna test two things. I wanna know what the play voltage is. Uh, so that should be one of these top two pins here. And I also want to see if we plug in the power and then immediately remove it, uh, which means we're not letting the heater heat up if it'll still drain off high power. That's probably the most dangerous scenario for high voltage inside this pedal is if you charge up the electrolytic capacitors, but don't let the tube warm up. So there's no a tube function. There's no thermionic emission to sort of bleed off that charge from inside the electrolytic capacitors, unless there's a bleeder resistor. We did the same process with the Kingsley pedal that we tried. This is sort of the same idea. So we'll test the play voltage first. We'll stop, let it cool down, plug it back in and re immediately remove it, thereby charging the caps. And we'll check and see if the voltage uh, on the plates still dissipates quickly or if it'll stay charged for a while. So let's plug in our power. We've got a light there at the bottom, which is good. We'll check and see where we're at here. All right, so there's our heater. That must be pin, let's see, is that four? Okay, so there's pin six. And that is about 200 some volts and following as the two heaters warm up, starts conducting. That'll probably settle out there right around 200 volts. And then we'll pull out the power. This will probably dissipate quickly because the tube is warm. And so it'll continue conducting and pulling charge out of those electrolytics as it slowly cools off right around 205 on the plates there. So we'll unplug our power. And yes, it is dropping down to safer voltages. We'll want to see it go below 30 volts or so. Yeah, so no problems there. You always want your tube amp designs when they're high voltage to not hold a charge for unnecessarily, unnecessarily long time, just for shock prevention. So that's dissipating fine. So I'm gonna leave this for a couple minutes, let it cool off completely so that we know that the heater is back to room temperature. And then we'll do what I said, we'll plug in the power and, and pull it out real quick and see how the power dissipates. All right, so it's been a couple minutes, heater's cooled down. Let's go ahead and give it power and then we'll quickly pull it out and see what happens to the plate voltage. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely a bleeder resistor in there somewhere. We know it's not the tube actually conducting because the filament was given, wasn't given enough time to really heat up. So there must be a resistor across the power supply somewhere that's just draining off the caps to ground, which is a good idea. Like I said, you don't wanna leave the system charged inadvertently for too long. You just risk shock if someone just thinks unplugging is good enough and they just immediately go reaching their fingers in there. They could pick up a shock if there isn't a way to dissipate the charge that sits inside electrolytic capacitors. All right, I got the Toe Nugget here set up just for a quick listening test. This is just one of those little Yamaha solid state, I don't even know what the part number is, little practice amp things. And just wanna make sure we're passing signal now. The original owner said it just was dead when it wasn't in bypass. So we will see if that is no longer the case. Pedal's off right now. Appears to be working. A lot of volume on tap there, uh, which makes sense as a booster pedal. So you wouldn't expect it to have a ton of gain in the pedal itself. It's just meant to push higher voltage gain into your next device, probably to send that into clipping. Presumably like a tube amp or something like that. Plenty of volume there. Tone control. There's the low pass filter. And the high pass filter, and then in the middle. All right, seems like the pedal's working just fine now. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, so that is the teardown and very quick and easy repair of the Crucial Audio Tone Nugget here. I'll uh, send the original tube back to the owner just for, I don't know, I guess like a souvenir of sorts.
If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing. If you have recommendations for pedal you want to see on an upcoming Teardown episode, leave me a comment and I will check that out. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thanks for watching.